Okay, traders, that is uh, 2 p.m. UK, British summertime. And we are going to, uh, to get rolling here. Um, before I start, if, uh, if you can just uh, let me know if you can hear me loud and clear and you can see the welcome screen, if you just type a Y into the chat box so that I know we are, uh, we're good to go. Great stuff, thanks very much. Okay, so before we jump into today's live market and trade analysis session, uh, important as always that we adhere to the risk disclaimer, uh, specifically for today's session, the views expressed uh, by me are solely mine, they're not indicative of or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Europe Limited. Uh, for those who are here for the first time, brief introduction to myself. My name is Patrick Munley, and after I graduated from King's College London, I joined the City PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup, which was focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. Essentially, I had a front row seat to the door, um, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the markets, quite literally at times overnight. I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriately, day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down uh, into positions, giving back essentially all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years, it was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal oriented individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset, and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you really lose that emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've also mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm engaged in some other market oriented projects. I'm currently a resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tickmill, providing an in-depth daily market outlook, breaking down fundamental and technical drivers for the day ahead. I also provide daily technical trade setups for two to three markets, uh, which are recorded as the Tickmill chart it. So you can access those uh, through my LinkedIn or through my Instagram feed. I also run uh, and manage the rapidly growing Tickmill eMini strategy group, where I provide a daily specific trade plan with intraday trade updates and alerts. Since its inception in April of this year, I've delivered over a thousand points of upside. The Tickmill Futures Group is here. Uh, you can see where I uh, provide the updates into the, into the group. I also provide research from uh, various investment banks and, uh, and tier one trading desks. 
And like I said, provide a daily a video a specific trade plan for the US cash trading session. Uh, we're actually uh, providing a two week free trial to that Ticknell uh, Futures and Options Group. I'll um, put the link into the chat for those that are interested in taking advantage of the trial. You can just send a request um, to that link there and you can, uh, you can join us for the, uh, for the daily trade plan and strategy. Um, in terms of the other guest passion project is really leading trading education for a premier trading education brand called fxcareerswap.com. Uh, we offer development and funding to retail trading talent at fxcareerswap. We don't just develop a retail trader's market and trading strategy knowledge, we work on mindset development through a structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. Most recently, I've been involved in developing the Trader Blueprint Strategy Group, which is a, pro a professional trading community where traders of all experience levels can access daily institutional insights from tier one investment bank trading desks and market strategy teams. There are regular market bulletins with in-depth positioning and sentiment analysis, actionable real-time chart analysis with daily setups and trading updates from our expert traders. Uh, with live trader education sessions, helping traders to develop a professional, consistent approach to navigating the markets and the mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a pro. Uh, for those that are interested in uh, joining the uh, trader uh, blueprint strategy group, what I'll do is um, post that link as well into the chat and you can request a two week uh, free trial to join us uh, in the strategy group. So I guess that, uh, that gives you a pretty good flavor of, um, of where I'm coming from and uh, my experience in the markets to date. Um, now what I want to do is jump into the charts and review where we're up to. Uh, also look at uh, potential setups that, is, that are developing currently in the markets and, uh, and we will uh, we'll see what opportunities are around. I'm starting, I'm starting here with the S&P 500. At a really critical juncture um, this week. I have uh, I've overlaid here uh, some Elliott Wave analysis. I don't want you to get too bogged down in that. What I really want to focus on here is um, the idea that we are at a pretty pivotal juncture here. We've come down this week um, and tested the monthly pivot at the uh, forty four eighty. We tested that this morning, and um, and we since then we've seen a, a bit of uh, demand come into the market and I'm actually looking now for the S&P to make one more high here. The reason why I'm looking for that uh, additional high is that we have an equality objective, uh, an equal legs objective and I'll draw this in for you so you can see exactly what it is I mean. We have this swing off the low here coming into this high which I've labeled as the major wave one so you can see we had a nice subdivide one two three four five and then we have an ABC correction. Now, if we overlay that swing versus the uh, corrective low there, which we're laboring as a wave, uh, wave two, uh, you can see that that gives us an equality objective at 46.12 in the S&P 500. The correction we've seen this week, I believe is uh, it's going to act as a wave four low setting up now a move through back through the uh, weekly pivot at 45.30 to ultimately take us up and test this 46.12 equality objective. Now that's going to be a key decision point for the markets because uh, we still have a bunch of active divergence down here on the, uh, the momentum studies. So you can see we're heavily divergent. We're making new, we've been making new highs in price, but we're not making anywhere near making new highs in terms of momentum. So what I'll be watching for as we trade into this 4600, 4612 area will be bearish reversal patterns to ultimately set short positions to play for a wave four corrective low back down into 4360. Now, this is, this is going to be a pivotal test for the market. It's a third test. Uh, sorry, it's the second test of this uh, major ascending trend line. Uh, we've obviously, I've overlaid uh, one, two here, the two swings there, and extended that to the upside. And if we do, if we clone that and we just 
join it to the uh, the low here that we're trading off the pandemic low, then that gives us a projected support zone there coming in around uh, 4380. And we've also got uh, monthly range support, projected range support coming at 4360. So that's going to be a pivotal zone. If we hold there, and then there's the potential that we extend higher again um, to make a, a, a the major wave five high, um, which would be back up through into this 4640, 4650 area. But for now, the focus is going to be on watching for uh, continued bullish signals to get that move up into the 4612 area. So that's why I'm watching the S&P. NASDAQ, <clears throat> similar story really, anticipating that we have a, an additional high to make in the NASDAQ. Uh, we've been trading right against this uh, ascending trend line resistance, had a couple of uh, shots at this on the short side um, and got, uh, got risk-free positions, but then got taken out. Uh, so now I'm looking for a fifth wave extension here to, uh, to put us up into weekly range resistance and that ascending trend line resistance, uh, 15,856 zone, watch for bearish reversal patterns there to, uh, to set short positions to play for a correction down into um, this, uh, certainly this initial, the initial target would be a move into the 15,200 level. And then ideally we see a three-way correction taking us down into that 14,750 for then the market reaches another decision point and we see if the bulls are going to step back in. The DAX, <coughs> it's, uh, it's proven a little bit weaker than the, uh, the other indexes this week. We've come into monthly range support here and we're finding, uh, we're finding a bit of a bid. But whilst we hold resistance now at uh, the 16,000 level, I'm looking for another leg to the downside to test this support zone at 14,847. And then from there, we'll have the potential to put in a wave for low and then extend up into a fifth wave objective, which will actually see us into this ascending trend line resistance and an ending diagonal as high, uh, just over 17,000. And then from there, we can see a more uh, sustained corrective move in terms of the DAX. So key areas to watch are gonna be resistance at 16,000 and then support back into this 15,000 area to set long positions, targeting a fifth wave extension up into that 17,000 zone. Nikkei, this one has, uh, has shown some real strength here. I was looking for the Nikkei to um, hold its ascending trendline resistance, but we broke out. Uh, we had the resignation or, of uh, PM Suga in uh, Japan, and that's been perceived as bullish. And so now what we're looking for is the potential for a significant double top to develop here. We have, you can clearly see a one, two, this is a potential three, four, and I use the uh, fifth wave as an equality objective versus wave one overlaid from our wave four, which will actually put us into a pretty significant potential uh, double top. The only thing that uh, is a little bit concerning with respect to calling this a double top is that the momentum studies have actually made uh, make, um, making new highs here. And so it could be that uh, we are in the process of putting in a meaningful low and we are actually going to extend to the upside once we correct this initial advance. Uh, so keeping an eye on the Nikkei, the Nikkei, uh, strength here um, and absolutely essential is going to be how we trade at these highs, the 30,737 level. If we break through there and, and continue higher, that's going to have significant implications for the other equity indexes. And I'll update uh, those through um, the daily, uh, daily videos, uh, depending upon how the price action plays out as the Nikkei tests into the resistance zone. The VIX volatility index. Is, uh, is rising, and uh, I've been talking about this most of the summer, uh, looking at uh, the price action that we saw in this uh, period here, where we tested, extended up, pulled back, and then really got the extension. I uh, wouldn't be surprised to see this, this VIX pop, especially um, once we get that next new high in the equity indexes and start to sell off. Um, this rising VIX is a warning that uh, investors are certainly becoming a little bit more concerned about portfolio exposure and as such are, uh, are applying protection to, to the portfolios. Dollar index. So I was looking this week for this, uh, this resistance zone at the 93 area to hold and get another leg lower here in the dollar. 
uh, looking then for this 92 and this ascending trend line support, still looking to carve out a major wave four high here. The, um, the, I guess the only caveat to that is if we take out this trend line support, so if we do roll over from here, um, then what we'd be looking for would be a three wave corrected move. So again, using that initial decline versus uh, the swing high here. So we could actually see price extend down into um, this 91 handle. We've also got monthly range support there before once again trying to, uh, to make another leg to the upside to complete the major wave four into the yearly pivot just above nine, the 94 handle. However, if we lose monthly range support at the 9090 level, that would then suggest that we actually have our wave four high in place and that would lead the uh, dollar index to extend down through the lows, uh, the prior lows at the 89, 89.30 level, en route to an ideal 87.50, which is a weekly downside objective. Let me just pull up the weekly chart here, the dollar index, so you can see exactly uh, what it is I'm talking about here. So this is the weekly chart of the dollar index. And, um, and what we're looking for is this is the big ABC objective, the quality objective. I'll just draw that in for you. So we have this swing high into this swing low. A, and then we use this as our B, and our C target is actually down at that 87.50. So um, if the dollar index does start to roll over here and we've got weekly momentum uh, starting to turn, then uh, we the downside objective is going to be 87.50. That will obviously have major implications for the FX majors, but for now, the attention is going to be on whether or not we can uh, hold the pitchfork support here that's coming in uh, just below 92. If we fail there, then we have an equality objective, which would see us down to the 91 handle. Below 91 would be a significant bearish development and suggest that we're going to trade, uh, we're going to trade lower to the downside. US 10 year yields. <coughs> Obviously, inflation, the, the hot topic. Um, I'm, looking, I'm still looking for another leg lower before uh, we can see a potential extension to the upside. You'll see the similarities here to the price action that we witnessed in uh, 2017, uh, in the, the last big jump to the upside that we had in terms of yields. Uh, I'm still looking for us to test this major ascending trend line support and the yearly pivot from above there, just above 1% in terms of yield. And then I think we can see the extension to the upside replicating this price action that we saw over there in this channel here. So um, still see that potential that we, we can extend to the upside in terms of yield. And obviously again, that extension would have implication uh, for equity markets, risk sentiment, and, uh, and the dollar index and the dollar majors. Gold. So with gold, what I'm looking for now is uh, support to hold here in and around this uh, one, eight, one, sorry, 1780 level uh, for another leg of upside to test this ascending trend line resistance, 1853. And then from there, I think we can see an extension to the downside. We do have an equality objective versus this major uh, swing structure here. Let me draw it in for you so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So we have this swing here into that swing high, and that has an equality objective down at 15.52 in terms of gold. So it's gonna be pivotal to see how uh, and we trade on any test of the 18.53 as to whether or not we're gonna see another down leg in terms of gold. Silver. Looking for silver to hold the current highs and get a retest of this uh, 2230 area or down into extend into those spike lows there at the 22 handle before we see a uh, another reversal to the upside to range resistance in terms of silver. Um, so watching price action carefully here, uh, see if we can get an extension through this support zone at 2370 to target 2230, and then we can look for the reversal. Crude oil. So crude uh, held its equality objective to pretty much to the tick there, 62.55. We're now trading at resistance here, just 
below 7050. Uh, if this is going to be our way for low, we look for a clean break of this trend line resistance, and that would then give the green light to long positions to ultimately look for an extension up through the prior highs at 77 to target a minimum upside objective of 80.34. However, if we can't get a clean break here of the trend line resistance, there's the potential that we do a double correction and, uh, and have to go a bit deeper uh, to, find, uh, to find fresh buyers in terms of crude oil. But for now, let's see if we can get a close through the trend line and then that sets, uh, that gives the green light for long positions and an extension to the upside in terms of crude oil. Copper. I always made the computers running a little bit slow today. <clears throat> Copper could have completed uh, an ABC here, um, although I'm looking for uh, resistance to come in at the 4.455 level and see another leg of downside. I'm looking for a test of the 3.855 support zone before we see the wave four low in place and uh, or a major wave two low, and then we can see a serious extension to the upside. So it's gonna be pivotal to see how we trade at this trend line resistance, or if we lose this trend line support as an early warning that we're heading down into the equality target. Bitcoin. Now there's a couple of um, scenarios here that I'm watching with Bitcoin. Uh, we've got this uh, trend line resistance now, let me just bring this in. And you can see that this leg to the downside had impulsive qualities, potential fifth wave. What we could be seeing here now is that Bitcoin has completed a interim. Let me draw this in for you. So we traded up into the equality objective at the, the target zone here between 50 and 54,000. It's in a Decent sell-off. Now, we're either going to do one of two things. We're either going to have a three-wave correction here that holds the support uh, down to 40,500. If it does, then that would suggest that we'll see a, an extension to the upside with Bitcoin, and we're ultimately looking for a test of the 75,000 uh, projected ascending trend line resistance. Or we've got, uh, we've got another uh, scenario that could play out here. If we can't take out that trend line resistance, then we have a bigger ABC target now. Uh, certainly, if this move starts to become impulsive, it doesn't look like that at the moment. We're not seeing much follow through yet. But if we do, uh, we could actually be looking down to 17,400 as correcting this entire advance here um, before we get the next leg of meaningful upside. So it's going to be pivotal to see, can we reclaim the 54,000 level? If so, I'd say that's a green light to the upside and target for 75,000. Or if we fail here at uh, the current equality objective at the 40,000 level, then uh, look out below. Certainly we can see uh, 33,000 and like I say, 17,400 would be the downside objective versus the current swing structure. Dollar wham. <coughs> Looking for an inverse head and shoulders to play out here. I think we could see one more low. So I'm just gonna let's draw this in here, like so. So one more low into this support zone. And uh, if that holds and we see buyers step in, then certainly we can think about a test of this descending trend line resistance and maybe something more meaningful up into these prior highs there at 6.58. Uh, 6 uh, so keeping an eye on the dollar yuan, obviously the dollar, uh, dollar index feeding into that. Dollar yen, not doing much of, of anything really. Sideways market at the moment. Um, and so I'm, I'm sidelines, no, no real setup as such. Watching this uh, ascending trend line support as long as that holds. And I think we can still grind up to test this 112. So, uh, but nothing of real interest there. Swissy, interesting. I highlighted this, uh, the potential for this box trade uh, to play out. And, uh, and currently we're, uh, we're tracking it pretty nicely. So what I've been watching for with the Swissy here is any move into uh, this pitchfork support so and this prior lows, so 1996, watch for bullish reversal patterns there as an opportunity to get in on the long side, certainly to target the 92, 1993 area as resistance. However, any loss, similar to the dollar index story, any loss of this support here 
uh, coming in at that 91, 1990 area uh, would suggest that we actually have a meaningful high in place and we're going to extend down into the support zone here. Uh, 18,985 is the next downside objective. That would be a pretty uh, pretty bearish development and suggest that we might be heading uh, much lower. And obviously that would have that would be driven by uh, by the dollar index. Dollar CAD. I think we're looking now probably at a, another leg here to the downside before setting up what could be a nice inverse head and shoulder scenario in terms of the dollar cap, but no immediate, uh, no immediate trade set up for me there. Singapore dollar, similar story here. This one could, uh, this one could set up uh, in the coming days. I'm gonna be watching really closely how price responds on a test of this ascending trend line pitchfork support coming in at 133.90. I'll be watching for daily bullish reversal patterns or four hour bullish reversal patterns to set long positions, looking for an extension to the upside in terms of the, uh, the Singapore dollar. And again, that's the, you know, this pattern is going to be pivotal. The, the dollar index move is going to be pivotal to whether or not that, uh, that move is going to play out. Euro. Uh, looking for support to hold here in and around 117.75. And ultimately what I'm looking for is a test of 120 as, uh, as a significant decision point. So uh, seeing a bit of a bullish reversal here, we've got nice uh, positive psych. Uh, so we're going to be watching. If we get back through the weekly pivot 118.60, uh, that will warrant long positions targeting that 120 move. Um, but it might be that we have to do a double correction and get this inverse head and shoulder scenario playing out. At 117.61, so we'll have to see how we close there. Euro yen, <clears throat> looking for an inverse head and shoulders. So as we hold this trend line resistance, looking for extension down into uh, certainly the pivots and uh, weekly range support cluster there, 129.40, but ideally down into this 128.60, and then watch for bullish reversal patterns, set long positions in terms of the euro yen. I'm going to whip through a few of these now as we're coming close to the uh, end of the time here. This is the one trade I've got running at the moment. I, um, in terms of FX, is the is the cable here. I'm looking for a move up into uh, this one uh, 140 area, and then from there we'll see if sellers are going to step back in. Uh, I initiated that uh, earlier today uh, through one 137.80. It's risk free and uh, running some, some decent profits at the moment. But I mean, look, that's my target zone there on, uh, on cable up into the 140. The other ones that I'm going to be watching um, tonight are the Kiwi. So this is starting to look, uh, look pretty bullish here in the Kiwi. So what I'll be watching for tonight is can we get a close back through this descending trend line resistance? We've got site that's breaking out here from uh, from its resistance and, and looking to test and break highs here so if we can get a nice bullish candle that closes uh, above 7145 7150 then that's going to be a signal for me on the long side and i'll be looking for prices to extend up uh, and target a move into monthly ranges well firstly weekly range resistance 72.53 and then on to 73.16 is what I'll be watching for there. So we obviously have a similar story in terms of the Aussie. Looking uh, potentially here at an inverse head and shoulder scenario, it's going to be pivotal to how we trade again if we can get a bullish reversal here through the weekly pivots at 74 and then it can be take out the resistance 74.50 uh, that could be a meaningful inverse head and shoulder scenario, similar to that of uh, of the Kiwi. Um, but we'll have to see the Aussie a little bit weaker than the Kiwi at the moment. And um, brings us up to uh, our mark. So essentially what I'm looking at as we, uh, as we go into the next few sessions is can these equity indexes, certainly the S&P, hold its current lows and make that fifth wave extension up through the 46 handle? Um, that should weigh on the dollar index, keep the dollar uh, weighted, and we should see support then for the risk currencies, uh, the 
sterling, euro, Aussie, and the Kiwi. Um, that's, uh, that's what I'm looking at over the, the coming sessions. And what I'll do over the next few days, I have got a bunch of yen charts that I want to uh, cover. And so what I'll do is I'll, I'll post those as chart hits uh, tomorrow, uh, showing you some of the setups and the levels that I'm watching in the yen. There are some interesting uh, areas of interest and opportunity in the ends, but I uh, just didn't have time to, uh, to run through that today. Uh, so what I want to do briefly now is just open up uh, Q&A here. If you have any questions or a chart you want me to quickly take a look at that I haven't covered, uh, feel free to type that into, uh, into, your, into the chat box or into the Q&A. Um, I've got a question here. Hello, can you please highlight when you, uh, where to enter a trade and where to place your stop loss? I'll give you an example, uh, a real-time example from this morning. Uh, Let's see, is that for our chart? No, this one. So this is uh, this is the setup I took in uh, in cable this morning. So this uh, this candle here was was the candle that uh, which suggested that we were having a bullish reversal pattern. Uh, we're on the four hour chart, obviously here, and. Um, I, I, I played the break of 37.80, and I used it, I, my stop was just below these wicks here at 37.50. So I was basically risking about 35 pips um, because I thought that if we extend through there, then it's likely we're gonna retest these lows and maybe extend down into weak range support. So uh, the, the entry was 37.80, the stop just below the, the swing low there at 37.50. Does that make sense? Any other questions? Equally, if you don't have a question, if you could type an N in the chat box so that I know we're on the same page and, uh, and I can wrap this one up uh, for this week. Okay, uh, be sure to take advantage of the links that I posted in the chat there to join uh, the Tickmill Futures Group and the uh, Trader Blueprint Strategy Group. Uh, great communities, great information, and uh, great learning and support in both of those uh, in both of those groups. Okay, guys, I am going to wrap this one up here. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan. Most importantly, manage your risk. I can't find the link. Uh, okay, let's see. So here is the strategy, uh, the Ticknell Futures Group. And uh, this is the Trader Blueprint. Okay, hopefully you can see those links and, uh, and we're gonna wrap this one up here. Thanks very much everyone, I hope this helps.